How you doing everybody? Gibbo here for Tutor Murphy with another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. In this video we're going to be doing something a little different and looking at scenery creation. Specifically, today we're going to do our best to improve the POI in the sim by adding in photogrammetry data externally. So quickly, just before I go any further, I must say for the record that I'm not a scenery creator. This will actually be my very first one. So any devs watching can totally point and laugh at me. But for the rest of you, uh, hey, if I can do it, you can too. Uh, and as always, we're not going to take ourselves too seriously in this video. Also, it's not a tutorial because, well, it would be an hour long. Uh, although, do let us know in the comments if you would like a tutorial. Um, and rather, we're going to be using the easiest way possible to do the job that we want in as short a time as possible. And finally, really the best tool of choice for any scenery creation has to be Blender, which we won't be using today, although we might cover it in a future video. So, with those health warnings out of the way, the goal of this video is simply to show you what's possible and maybe give you a little flavour of what's involved in scenery creation. So hopefully that sounds like a plan, and um, without further ado, let's jump in. Starting off in Google Maps, I do have an idea of a location, and that's Crow Park. Crow Park, for those who don't know, is home to Gaelic Games in Ireland, which is Gaelic football. Sorry, don't know. Stop it. That's Jibbo, my cousin. Apologies. And hurling. Hurling is the fastest field game on the planet, so you know, do check them out for yourself. This model, if I hit control, does allow me circle around it, and I can see that there certainly is photogrammetry data there, which is perfect. That is not an error in the stadium, that is Hill 16. And uh, that is actually what it looks like. Uh, and Crow Park actually holds what is it, over 80,000 people, so it is, a, it is a phenomenal stadium, one of the biggest in Europe actually. So this model looks pretty good to me, definitely an option. Let's find its coordinates. If I right click here, I should get its coordinates. There we go. Pop them into the sim, uh, just to compare what it looks like out of the box in the sim. And in the coordinates, four to get them. Minus six, five, seven, one. That's it, perfect. So load that up in the sim, set that as our departure, click fly, and we'll see what it's like. I'm in dev mode at the moment. I'm going to pause the simulation. I'm going to click ready to fly, and I'll change my camera to the developer camera. Okay. So, okay. Well, mm -hmm. interesting. Oh dear. Looks a bit like a, a fried egg. You can see... Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, there's a building on top of the Hogan stand. Uh, Hill 16 looks flat. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Davin stand looks totally flat. And the Cusick stand looks like it could hold about 10 people. Um, we contrast that to this model. Well, you can see yourself. It's night and day, really, the difference. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that's definitely what we're going to do. We're going to pull this particular model and pop it into the sim. To do so, we're going to use this app called Google Earth Decoder or Earth to MSFS. And before we open up this tool and download it, we're going to just get our file structure ready. So I'll speed this up, and this is where I get the XML files correct and ready to go, and our folder structure correct for our project. Okay, so now we'll open up Google Earth Decoder. It's an exe, so it just opens straight away. There's no search functionality. Um, but before I go any further, I'm just going to add my folder, which is in package sources. So it downloads um, the model and the textures in the right location. Zooming into Dublin, we want to look for the north side of the Liffey. 
found a place called Drumcondra. See, there it is. Okay, if you see a big stadium, do let me know. It's here somewhere. Ah, there it is. There's Crow Park. Okay, so this app couldn't be more simple to use. There's LOD, which is uh, levels of detail on the right, sliders on the detail on the right. Now, I'm not going to really touch them too much, but right clicking, you can draw a box. So I want to make sure I get all four corners of Crow Park and click download. And this is the time you go for a coffee. The magic of editing later, uh, the download is finished. So let's see what the download files look like. Go to the location that I saved them in package sources. And there we see model lib and we can see all the model files there. And in texture, we can see all the texture uh, that it's downloaded for us. Perfect. Okay, so now what we want to do is go back into the sim. We'll open up our project that I created with my folder structure and XML files. And we want it to create a package for us using the model and textures that we just downloaded. This is time for another copy. And that is done. Through the magic of editing, and we're going to just load the project in our editor, in the scenery editor window. So, wow, we can see it's done a pretty good job. Certainly, not only is the stadium good, but all the um, uh, locations around it have also been downloaded. But what's good about it as well is that it's popped it right away into the correct location for me. Um, now, it's not perfect. There's, there's definitely some work that needs to be done here. Um, if I lift it up, what you'll be able to see here is exactly what's downloaded. So let me lift it up. There we go. And yeah, that looks really, really good. Um, obviously, the job that I have to do now is trying as best as I can to manipulate it to fit and blend into the background of the existing map data that's there and kind of just leave the stadium itself protruding. It looks a little better. Zoom in a bit. Okay, we can still see in the right hand side there the two buildings sticking out. Fix that. And yeah, the pitch is a bit lopsided. Okay, so I'm going to manipulate this as best as I can. I'll speed this up, but I won't edit it away so you can see exactly uh, that it is me doing it. And uh, we'll come back in a moment. So we're getting there. It's certainly not ready yet, but one thing I'm going to do is create a polygon. So by holding control and left clicking, I'm drawing a box around the stadium itself. Uh, let me change that point to there. I'm double clicking to create the polygon itself. Under properties, if I select exclude all, that will remove any auto gemmed buildings. It does remove the photogrammetry that pre-exists, but it does remove the autogen buildings, and that fixes the problem that we had in the Hogan stand. Okay, so I'll carry on and try my best to work on it some more by adjusting the translate, rotate, and scale uh, gizmo boxes. Okay, so it's definitely coming along. Now, one thing that I've spotted, and it's a minor pet peeve of mine, is, well, trees on the pitch. Um, you do see them in stadiums, actually, in the sim here and there. So that's easy for us to fix as well, and we're going to use the same process as before. 
We'll add a polygon and we'll draw around the inside of the stadium. We hold can trick, yeah, we hold control even and left click. And two clicks at the end to finish our polygon. And under properties, we're going to look for vegetation and we're going to move the slider all the way to the left. And that's cleared up all the trees. And I'm pretty happy that that's, for this example at least, enough and as best I'm going to get it. It's not perfect, but it, it certainly looks a lot better. I'm going to click on Build Package. Time for yet another cuppa. In real time, just so you know, the Build Package probably took between 5 and 10 minutes. And that's it built. So, we'll reload it. Click on my scenery, open up the inspector, click load in editor, and we'll see how it's looking. As we zoom down, it should start to load. And yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Is it perfect? No, particularly around the perimeter when roads kind of join up to one another. Um, but wow, it's a hundred times better than it was with the with the fried egg before. I'm Pretty chuffed by that. Now, I do want to change a few things. It did look a bit shiny. So to fix the shininess, under metallic factor, I'm going to change the values using Notepad++. It'll actually change all the files for me. You can see it's changed over 2000 iterations of that particular value for me in the various model files. I can click save all, which will save all those model files. So that'll improve the shininess working on the metallic factor. And then going into Photoshop here, I have a little action called MSFS fix, which decreases the color balance of the blues. It's a little too blue for me. I've decreased it by minus 15. I'm running this action. Now this action was over well, 2000 files. So clicking OK resulted in, yes, this spinny wheel for ooh, nearly an hour is what it took in real time. Again, I'll save you the burden of watching it all. Nothing too exciting here. And we'll come back when all the blue has been taken out, just to really try and color correct it and make it blend that bit better. Now, back in the sim, I'm gonna open up my project and one last build package. And this is building the package with the new textures that I have modified in Photoshop and, and the model files as well. There's the console window, so that's it done. Let's load it into the sim now and see what it looks like. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That'll certainly do for me. Now, if this was something that you were distributing or selling, even dare I say, you know, you'd certainly want to work on it some more. But for personal use, it's perfect. That looks so much better. I'm happy with that. Let's see what it's like from the air where you'd be flying. Well, all I need to do is in my project file, go into packages. There's the Crow Park that I've, that's a package and I can pop that into my community folder. Done. I can exit now out of dev mode and load it up with a plane and see what it's like. I'm pretty chuffed with that. If you'd like to download this Crow Park version, it's available for free on twotonemurphy.com slash downloads. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's just to show you the art of the possible and maybe a relatively quick way to create your own scenery using photogrammetry externally. Thanks so much indeed for watching as always, really appreciate it. Until the next one, take care.